Welcome everybody to the service for the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. And I do pray that we will all be truly blessed as we share in this time together. In the parish, the birthday is this coming week, the 31st of October, Kerry Cooper, the 4th of November, Hilton Walker, and the 5th of November, John Shaw. We wish you all a very happy birthday and pray that the year ahead will be truly blessed. Anniversaries on the 4th of November, Philip and Narina Whitfield celebrate their special day. Congratulations on the celebration and we do pray that there would be many more to come. The Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon our sins and set us free from them, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. Let us pray. O God, in Christ you seek and save the lost. Visit us with the joy of salvation, that we may rejoice in the riches of your forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, and chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Habakkuk's Complaints The oracle that Habakkuk the prophet received. How long, O Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets, so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, he is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous will live by his faith. Hear the word of the Lord. Psalm 119, verses 137 to 144. Righteousness are you, Lord God, and just are your judgments. The commands that you have commanded are exceedingly righteous and true. Zeal and indignation have choked my mouth, because my enemies have forgotten your words. Your word has been tried in the fire, and therefore your servant loves it. I am small and of no account, but I have not forgotten your precepts. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is the truth. Trouble and anguish have taken hold on me, but your commandments are my delight. The righteousness of your commands is everlasting. O oh, give me understanding, and I shall live. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, 
is now and will be forever. Amen. The second reading comes from 2 Thessalonians, verses 1 to 4 and 11 to 12. From Paul, Silas and Timothy, to the people of the church in Thessalonica, who belong to God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Our brothers and sisters, we must thank God at all times for you. It is right for us to do so, because your faith is growing so much, and the love each of you has for the others is becoming greater. That is why we ourselves boast about you in the churches of God. We boast about the way you continue to endure and believe through all the persecutions and sufferings you are experiencing. That is why we always pray for you. We ask our God to make you worthy of, of the life he has called you to live. May he fulfill by his power all your desire for goodness and complete your work of faith. In this way, the name of Lord Jesus will receive glory from you and you from him by the grace of our God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear the word of the Lord. The good news is proclaimed in the 19th chapter of St. Luke, beginning at verse 1. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Jesus went on into Jericho and was passing through. There was a chief tax collector there named Zacchaeus, who was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but he was a little man and could not see Jesus because of the crowd. So he ran ahead of the crowd and climbed into a sycamore tree to see Jesus who was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to that place, he looked up and said to Zacchaeus, Hurry down, Zacchaeus, because I must stay in your house today. Zacchaeus hurried down and welcomed him with great joy. All the people who saw it started grumbling. This man has gone as a guest to the home of a sinner. Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Listen, sir, I will give half my belongings to the poor, and if I have cheated anyone, I will pay back four times as much. Jesus said to him, Salvation has come to this house today, for this man also is a descendant of Abraham. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Once again, we seem to be presented with readings today that challenge us to remain firm in our faith and actually to grow in love and faith, to be the church that God calls us to be. This call is made in the midst of some very challenging circumstances that we find ourselves having to deal with. However, the examples in Scripture give us a reassurance that we are not alone in our journey, and we most certainly have never been neglected. It is also true that God's plan and timing is a very real thing. No matter how much we try to manipulate things, God's timing is perfect. As I said two weeks ago, it is sometimes very hard to see where God is in all that is going on in the world. But the reassurance is given to us that we are not alone. We're not alone in our concerns and we start this morning with an interesting glimpse into the book of the prophet Habakkuk. Habakkuk's prophecy was directed to a world that through the eyes of God's people must have seemed on the edge of disaster. Even when the northern kingdom had been destroyed in 722 BC, God's people remained in Judah. However, with another powerful foreign army on the rampage, faithful people like Habakkuk were wondering what God was doing. Hadn't God given the land to his people? Was God now going to take it away? Habakkuk's prayer of faith for the remainder of God's people in the face of such destruction still stands today 
as a remarkable witness of true faith and undying hope. Among the prophetic writings, Habakkuk is quite unique in that it includes no oracle or prophecy addressed to Israel. It contains, rather, a dialogue between the prophet and God. In the first two chapters, Habakkuk argues with God over God's ways that appear to the prophet unfathomable, if not unjust. Having received replies, Habakkuk then responds with a beautiful confession of faith, which we find in chapter 3. Habakkuk initiated this conversation based on his distress about God's inaction in the world. He wanted to see God do something more, particularly in the area of justice for evildoers. The book of Habakkuk pictures a frustrated prophet, much like the prophet Jonah, though Habakkuk channeled his frustration into prayers and eventually praise to God, rather than trying to run from the Lord as Jonah did. As the prophet Habakkuk stood in Jerusalem and pondered the state of his nation, Judah, he must have been dumbfounded. So much evil thrived, completely in the open, but God remained strangely silent. Where was he? How long would he allow this mess to continue? Well, not long, according to the Lord, as we see in chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. You see, another nation, the Babylonians, would come and execute justice on the Lord's behalf. The wicked in Judah, those who thought they would get away with their evil de deeds forever, were soon to be punished. The book of Habakkuk offers us a picture of a prideful people being humbled, while the righteous live by faith in God. It reminds us that while God may seem silent and uninvolved in our world, he always has a plan to deal with evil and always works out justice, eventually. The example of the prophet Habakkuk encourage, encourages believers to wait on the Lord, expecting that he will indeed work out all things for our good. I'm reminded here of the words of Paul in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, where he says, And we know that all that happens to us is working for our good if we love God and are fitting into his plans. Talking about Paul, his two letters to the Thessalonians are believed to be amongst the earliest Christian writings. They were written by Paul to this early Christian community to keep faith, even in the face of some very testing opposition to their faith. Thessalonica was a cosmopolitan city, with some scholars referring to it as a free city. It was also the capital city of Macedonia. Its location was very strategic for its economic growth, political influence, and social cohesion. As a result, Thessalonica had a variety of tradesmen, manual workers, and unemployed rural workers attracted to the city. Another aspect to this cosmopolitan city was it that, that it was a place with very diverse religious and ethnic groups. It is believed that a Jewish synagogue was established, Greek gods were also worshipped, and Egyptian cults seem to have been significant as well, promoting the worship of Egyptian deities. It is into this mix of religions and beliefs that the new Christian sect was introduced by Paul and was eventually grown and developed by the early Christians in Thessalonica. The particular focus in our passage for today is Paul's thanksgiving for the way in which they have kept their faith and have grown in both faith and love, despite the persecution that was taking place. Paul commends them for persevering in the faith. And then in verses 11 to 12, we see Paul's prayer for these believers. Paul reassures these believers that he and other Christians continuously pray for the church in Thessalonica, something that must have been very reassuring to them. In our Gospel reading today from Luke, we have another story involving a tax collector, those less than popular characters in the time of Jesus. 
Once again, Jesus engages with the tax collector, collector, this time a chief tax collector named Zacchaeus, who had climbed a tree in order to try and see this new rabbi that everybody was talking about. Jesus says to Zacchaeus that he would like to come and stay in his house, and no doubt a meal was shared. The response, of course, of those who witness this encounter is again one of grumbling and judgment because Jesus was engaging with and being entertained by a sinner. However, because God's timing is always perfect, a dramatic change comes over Zacchaeus and he encounters divine grace. He immediately committed himself to give half of his possessions to the poor and to repay fourfold anyone whom he had defrauded. Zacchaeus' desire to meet with Jesus opened him up to the transforming power of the gospel message and the grace of God, and his life was completely transformed. This says to me that with God, all things are possible. So what does all of this say to us? There is no doubt that God has charged us as his church to be his representatives in the world. In saying this, there is a huge responsibility placed on all believers to respond to this call to stand up. It is said that the most deplorable aspect of our existence as a church is when we fail to be the voice of the voiceless, the oppressed, the marginalized and the downtrodden. The church's role has been ordained by God through Christ and is sustained through the presence of the Holy Spirit. When Paul writes to the church in Thessalonica and addresses it as God's church, he's pointing out that God's divine authority rests with them, along with the responsibility that brings. This implies that there needs to be spiritual growth taking place. Spiritual growth is essential for the witness of the church. It was essential in that day and it is essential today to us. This growth, however, is not automatic like biological growth. It takes effort to grow spiritually and the onus is on us to make this effort to grow in faith and love. The ultimate expectation is that those who follow Christ as Lord of their lives should be growing in the quality of their lives. The sad thing is that the prevailing trend is that growth is measured in terms of material possessions, prosperous living and money. It seems as though growing one's character is no longer a focal point for the society that we live in. There are a few lessons coming out of this for me. Habakkuk asked God the kind of question that so many of us have pondered. Why do you force me to look at evil, stare trouble in the face day after day? We've all seen the evidence of evil in our lives. We've all been touched by it. And we bear scars at various stages of healing. Surrounded by evil as if we are trapped in a dark prison cell of our own making, we are often downtrodden by our poor choices and our fallen world. However, the book of Habakkuk reminds us that no place is too dark and no wall too thick for God's grace to penetrate in a powerful and life-affirming way. There's also an important faith lesson to be learned from the church in Thessalonica, that there was a great reward waiting for those who persevere in the face of persecutions. They were able to do this because of the hope that they had in the promises of God, seen in the teachings and example of Christ, as well as Paul's affirmation of this future hope. During challenging and turbulent times, we as the church, the community of believers, need to tap into this long-standing and everlasting source of sustenance, hope, even though the situation may seem overwhelming. The truth is, we can live out the future in the present only if we live in hope. We can endure the tough times only if we live in the hope of the promise that we are incredibly and deeply loved. 
Paul's words in Romans 8 verses 38 to 39 speak of this incredible love. And I would like to end with them. Paul says, For I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from his love. Death can't and life can't. The angels won't and all the powers of hell itself cannot keep God's love away. Our fears for today, our worries about tomorrow or where we are, high above the sky or in the deepest ocean, nothing will ever be able to separate us from the love of God demonstrated by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for the church throughout the world. We pray that we may proclaim the fullness of the gospel with our words and with our lives and bring the light of Christ to the world. Give us courage to stand strong in the face of persecution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who suffer the effects of violence, the vulnerable, the weak, the disadvantaged, the unborn, the elderly, and the poor. We pray that through the power of the cross, we may conquer hatred with love and pride with patience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our families and especially families suffering from division, strife and deceit. We pray that the peace of Christ may heal wounded hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish and for this community. We pray that the lost may find in us the mercy at the heart of Jesus. Help us to be a loving and caring church, reflecting the love of Christ to the community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and for our government and all who are in positions of power and authority. We pray that all may seek the common good and that our government may protect the innocent and serve the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick. We pray that they may find true healing and encouragement. And now we pray especially for those whom we know. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died. We pray that they may see the beauty of our Saviour in the Father's house. We pray, Lord, that you would comfort those who mourn and who are hurting with their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh Lord, I am not worthy that Thou should come to me, but speak the word of comfort my spirit healed shall be and humbly i'll receive thee the bridegroom of my soul no more by sin to grieve thee or fly thy sweet control Eternal Holy Spirit, unworthy though I be, prepare me to receive Him and trust the Word to me. Increase my faith. Prayer.
presence here and make me feel most deeply that thou to me art We come now to the celebration of the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfilment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you, and so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of the evil one and banish the darkness of sin and death. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now, with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Who in the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you. In the same way he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we bring before you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit 
upon the offering of your holy church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honour are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, broken for us. Amen. blood of Christ shed for us. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. His mercy endures forever. Almighty and eternal God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the body and blood of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and for keeping us by your grace in the body of your Son, the company of all faithful people. Help us to persevere as living members of that holy fellowship, and to grow in love and obedience according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. God bless Africa, protect our children, 
transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity, and give us peace, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, remain with us now and always. Amen. So dear friends, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.